Okay, in the last video we saw the definition of pi 1 of x based at x for a topological space capital X as the fundamental group. And I want to take some time in this video to go through some examples where we can compute what it is. Uh, so first example, well we actually already know the answer. Pi 1 of Euclidean space based at the origin is trivial. The trivial group just has one element, the uh, identity element, a constant loop, because we, sh we showed in an earlier video that all loops based at the origin are homotopic to the constant loop via a kind of rescaling homotopy. Okay, uh, let's do um, another example. So Here's the second example. I'm not going to prove it for you. If you take the circle, I'll prove it later, but I'm not going to prove it now. Take the circle, thought of sitting inside uh, the unit complex, sorry, inside the complex numbers as the unit complex numbers, and then you take the base point to be the point one, which is a unit complex number. The fundamental group you get is the integers And, you know, that integer just counts the number of times a loop winds around the circle in the positive direction or the negative direction if it's a negative integer. This we will prove later. This we proved earlier. And actually all the computations of pi 1 that we use will depend on the fact that pi 1 of s1 is z. So, you know, many of the computations you're just going to have to take this fact on trust until we get to it later on in the course. Um, okay, I want to do one more example, but before I do, uh, we're going to need to prove some preliminary stuff. Uh, so the stuff we're going to prove is about simply connected spaces. So simply connected space, space X, is called simply connected. If, like Rn, it has trivial fundamental group. Now, technically, here there's an extra choice of, of base point. Um, we'll, we'll see how the fundamental group depends on base points later. And suffice it to say, if X is a path connected space, in other words, any two points can be connected by a path, then the fundamental group that you get doesn't depend on which point. So um, I'm going to assume that this is a path connected space for the definition to make sense. Okay, and here's a fact about simply connected spaces. If uh, pi 1 of x is trivial, um, and x and y are points in x, then If there's a path, well, I guess I've I've assumed it's a connected space, so I've assumed sorry I've assumed it's a path connected space. There is a path from x to y. Um, then there is a unique homotopy class of paths from x to y. So when I defined homotopies, I guess I defined homotopies of loops. Homotopy class of paths just means the same thing. You have a homotopy where this is one path, this is another path. And instead of requiring that this point and this point are the same, you just don't require that. Um, instead, we're looking at paths from X to Y. 
So all of these points have to map to x and all of these points have to map to y. But there's no requirement that x equals y. Okay, so if a claim is if I have a simply connected space, then any two paths between the same two points are homotopic. And that kind of makes sense, right? Because if it was not simply connected, maybe it had a hole in like this, you wouldn't be able to homotope because your path would get caught somehow in this hole. But if there's no hole there, you should be able to continue and homotope from here to here. Okay, so let's prove it. So um, give these names, right? So it's going to be alpha and beta from x to y. So because pi 1 is, is trivial, um, if I go around alpha and then back along beta, This is in pi 1 of x at x, and this is trivial, so this is, is trivial. This is equal, this is homotopic to the constant map at x, which I'll write like this epsilon subscript x. Now, if I just multiply through by beta, I get beta, beta inverse alpha same as beta dot epsilon x. This is the identity, remember, so this is homotopic to beta, and beta inverse, remember, going backwards around a loop is an inverse, so this is homotopic to alpha, so alpha is homotopic to beta. Okay. So this is why uh, pi 1 being trivial is, is called simply connected because it means not only can you connect two points but you can connect them in essentially only one way up to homotopy. So let's see where this is going to get used. I want to compute pi 1 of the sphere, the two-dimensional sphere, with some base point, let's say the South Pole, this is the North Pole, and the claim is pi 1 of the sphere based at the south pole is trivial. So the sphere is simply connected. I'm going to use this lemma at some point in the proof. So here's an idea for how you'd prove this. Um, first of all, you'd notice that if your loop missed the north pole for whatever reason, it would be contractible to a point. Why is that? Well, the sphere minus the North Pole is um, homeomorphic to the plane R2. This word homeomorphic Again, if you haven't come across this word, don't worry. It just means that the same topological space, like isomorphic, but for topological spaces. You will see more about this word if you watch the videos on topology. It means, you know, because we've already seen R2 simply connected, it means this is also simply connected. Um, how do you see the homeomorphic? Well, you've probably seen this stereographic projection map in one of your courses on complex analysis or or geometry or something. Stereographic projection is the thing that takes a point on the surface of the sphere, takes the line through the North Pole and that point, and maps you down to the plane in that direction. So it's not defined at the North Pole, it's defined for all the other points. And it gives you a bijection, which is continuous with continuous inverse, from the sphere minus the North Pole to the plane. This is via stereographic projection.
So if you look at the stereographic projection of your little red loop, that's going to be in the plane as long as it... Oh, that's a really bad picture. It should do something like this. This is stereographic projection, that loop. Uh, so that is sitting inside R2. R2 is simply connected. So if our loop um, gamma avoids the North Pole, then it's null homotopic. So it's null homotopic. Remember that means uh, can be contracted to the constant loop. It's homotopic to the constant loop. If our loop doesn't avoid the North Pole, then we have to worry. But you might think, well, I can just wiggle it a little bit to make it avoid the North Pole, so everything's fine, right? Because wiggling is a homotopy, and indeed that is true. But you need to be very careful, because it turns out that there are loops on the sphere that go through every single point of the sphere so-called space filling curves uh, so the thing is your intuition for loops is really very bad at dealing with continuous loops like we don't know that much you know we don't have a good way of visualizing continuous functions they can be really quite horrible um, so you need to be very careful in uh, improving this um, so what are we going to do um, let you a neighborhood of the North Pole, an open set around the North Pole. Uh, I'm just going to create a new page and go back up again. Uh, let me sketch the neighborhood. Maybe I'll do it in orange. Pole. and our loop will come in maybe go through the North Pole maybe come out again maybe go back in who knows how many times it does it it could do it very very many times um, and let V be well I want I want to say everything else but if this is an open neighborhood, then V would be a closed set. So I want to take a small open neighborhood of the complement. Of U. So in other words, V is like everything down here plus a little tiny collar to make it an open set. And what I want to do is I want to use the fact the interval is compact. So um, gamma inverse, gamma is our red loop, remember. Gamma inverse of u and gamma inverse of v comprise a collection of open intervals because gamma is a continuous map, so pre-images of open sets are open. And, um, and this is open with respect to the subspace topology on 0, 1. So you don't need to worry about the end points being closed, is what I'm saying. In other words, open away from those endpoints. Um, and Okay, you comprise a collection of open intervals, and uh, because zero one is compact, um, I only need finitely many of those intervals to cover the whole of zero one. Um, so we can find a finite subcover. Again, if you haven't seen compactness, or if you haven't seen compactness in the context of topological spaces, you can go and watch the, the videos that I've 
made about, about topology, point cell topology. But maybe you've seen like the high number L theorem in analysis to say if you have a compact compact set, then any open cover has a finite subcover. So this implies that there's some finite sequence of times t0 less than t1 less than tn starting at 0 ending at 1 such that if I restrict gamma to each interval ti ti plus 1 then the image is contained in either u or in v or it could be in the overlap who cares it that the overlap is in one of these two so each interval maps to u or each interval maps to sorry, some intervals will map to u some will map to v but each interval is contained entirely inside one or the other possibly both right and then we just need to worry about those finite set of intervals where the image is contained in u because those are the ones where it might go through the north pole so we need uh, a homotopic path um, which avoids the north pole So all I'm going to do is focus on one of these intervals, like in this picture, maybe this one. I'll do it in green, where it goes through the set U. I'll tell you how to modify the path on that subinterval, and then you can do that for all the subintervals, which are bad, which go through the North Pole. So um, for an I such that gamma restricted to ti, ti plus 1 hits u, we can replace this segment of path with another segment of path. So um, just pick any delta, any path delta from gamma of ti to gamma of ti plus 1. So I'll, I'll redraw it down here. Here's our u. Here's our guy that's going through the North Pole. You've got to pick a different path. I'll do it in pink that connects the endpoints. and that avoids the North Pole. So delta avoids the North Pole. So this is delta, this is gamma. By the lemma that we proved up here, because the disk is simply connected, the point, the uh, paths between two pairs of points are all homotopic. So in particular, gamma and delta are homotopic. With fixed endpoints. So I'm fixing these two endpoints. And so if I simply replace this, maybe I'll call it gamma i. The restriction to this subinterval. So replacing gamma i with delta, we get a homotopic path which avoids the North Pole. One point is we can actually do this, right? So we can pick a path from here to here that avoids the North Pole. The reason we can do that um,
is that the ball u minus the point n is path connected. I can find a path between any two points. If you haven't seen this notion of path connectedness, again, there's a whole video about it that I've made. And in, in particular, I show this fact that the disk minus or R2 minus a point is path connected. OK, so we do this for each of the intervals that go through U. We end up with a new path that avoids the North Pole, but which is homotopic to the one we started with. So this implies gamma itself is homotopic to the constant path, the constant loop. So that shows that the sphere is simply connected. Okay, so during the course we will see many, many examples of non-simply connected spaces, but here are a few where we can actually prove without too much difficulty that they are actually simply connected spaces.